who would have been impacted by this? I mean, I got to say, the people who are most going to be impacted are going to be the clients of, of those funds, the people who have their money invested. GAM basically is not an especially well-known uh, money manager worldwide. It's a, it's a Swiss money manager that's found itself in a bit of a media storm uh, after the suspension of, of Tim Haywood. And what they've done today is basically say, OK, we're going to start paying out some money from those funds which have been liquidated. But look a little bit more closely, um, and different people are going to get their money back at different times. About three billion of that cash is uh, basically in um, Cayman domiciled hedge funds. Now that stuff is a little bit less liquid and people are going to get their money back from those funds less quickly. Other funds which are domiciled in Luxembourg and in Ireland, uh, people are going to get their, their cash back a little bit more quickly. So, you know, obviously the clients are going to be affected, but I'm sure there's also going to be some, you know, vultures looking now for opportunities, thinking what's exactly in those less liquid Cayman funds and uh, how quickly is GAM going to have to sell it. A cumulative pattern of potential misconduct. Is that what led to all of these redemptions by one man? I think this is kind of one of the key questions that people feel GAM hasn't properly answered yet. You know, they'll say, you know, as, as, as you rightly point out, a cumulative pattern of misconduct. They'll say, well, you know, look, at, he had some, uh, some, some record keeping issues. Maybe he, he broke some expenses policies, gift policies. But I mean, come on, is that really a reason for deleting? Uh, an entire uh, strategy which is worth around seven billion uh, you know, and employs 20, 30 or 40 people um, you know, and it's contributing millions every year. You know, it, it, was, it was the second biggest strategy which GAM had to offer. So what exactly has he done wrong that's so bad uh, you know, which, which would require them to suspend the guy and also lose the fund? Well, Patrick, that seems to be what, what's so confusing here because, I mean, GAM may not be well known, but we're all sort of familiar with these unconstrained hedge funds and the sort of black box that a lot of them operate in. Uh, is there a broader issue here that really goes beyond GAM and into just the structure of these types of funds? I mean, it could be people will point back to similar situations which happened three or four years ago or, you know, perhaps which happened during the financial crisis. Obviously, the, uh, you know, the, the Luxembourg registered funds have, have tighter restrictions. I believe that, you know, they have, they have these liquidity requirements and people are allowed to redeem almost every day, whereas in the Cayman, it's uh, a little bit more opaque and uh, it takes a longer time to get your money back. That means that if you have uh, assets which are in the Cayman Islands, um, you're going to have, as a company which owns the fund, a longer time to sell those assets. So, you know, they'll say it's just for institutional investors uh, and, uh, and that these people know the risks. At the end of the day, though, those institutional investors are often pension funds which have got mine and yours money in it.